Welcome to the Guitars, Cowboys, and Hibble and Music podcast. We are joined today with some very special guests. We're here with Treaty Oak Revival. How are you guys doing today? Doing good, yeah. man. We're filming in the Tumbleweed for the first time, um, and we got an opportunity to come in a little early and uh, get to sit down and hear the sound check, and it sounds great. I'm super excited for the show. Hey, man, appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. So do you guys want to introduce yourselves real quick, just like what, what, what your role is in the band, your name, where, where you're from? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Andrew. I play bass, handle low end, and I am from Abilene, Texas. My name is Lance Vanley. Uh, I play rhythm electric guitar and I sing backup vocals. Jeremiah Vanley. I play lead guitar and. Uh, I'm Cody ho- Holloway and I uh, beat the skins. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the terminology beat right. the skins. <laughs> do you? Um, I ask every drummer that we've had on this so far. Do you? Do you ever play barefoot? Sometimes, only at home though. Okay. So is that, I've always heard that was like maybe a thing. Sometimes that drummers play barefoot. Is that just like a? Oh, it happens. It just depends on the guy, I guess. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> so, what would you guys classify your genre as? I hear a lot of different different uh, titles put on it. Yeah, uh, it kind of seems to, to flow that way. I mean, it kind of, you know, we started out just barely three years ago coming out with uh, Ode to Bourbon. We did a live recording in Odessa, Texas over at the Ector Theater while it was still under construction. They were doing these cool little sessions with local musicians. And uh, we got to go do that, and we ended up putting that on on Spotify. And uh, at that time, I would say we were kind of going more of like, definitely like Texas country, but more, not more traditional, but like a little more rock Texas country. But now I would say it's moved, you know, we're still, we've still got, you know, a lot the more Texas grit. country songs. But yeah, it's mm-hmm. a lot more grit now, as well as just like, um, kind of what we play and talk about has changed kind of from the first album as to what we're writing on the second album now and uh, finishing up. And so kind of we're moving towards a more southern rock, you know, yeah. with the Texas country, with our, you know, with Sam being our front man and uh, his voice, you kind of will never be able to get away from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah for uh, sure. But, you know, it's not something that, you know, we're, we feel like, you know, we have to be held back by or anything like that. We're able, you know to for this second album really kind of record the music that we wanted to record of what we like the sound of and put that out and you know with uh you know we released haunted house which is a little bit closer mm-hmm. to some of the sounds you'll be hearing on the next album um as well as some of the songs that we've been doing that are new live that we haven't released anywhere yet uh it seems like we've had a really good uh, you know feedback from people and just seeing how they react to the new songs the sound they're sitting there staring at us blankly or if they're sitting there you know bobbing their heads if they knew the words they'd be singing along you know kind of be able to see that and right now it looks like you know if they knew the words they'd be wanting to sing along exactly so i've i've noticed that there's a lot of like uh like rock tunes like mixed in with country sounds also mm-hmm. and i've noticed there's, there's a lot of like punk rock too. yeah that's, that's absolutely, really yeah. that's really inspired by, by yeah this that's a lot of the a lot of the second album as well is you know really pulling from a lot of you know punk roots of us growing up and rock as well so with you know jeremiah he is basically Eddie Van Halen over here <laughs> on the guitar in our I, band. I and, noticed uh, that earlier yeah. when you were, you were uh, doing sound check. Yeah. I mean, he's shredding. Yeah. He, he was doing a little bit of an eruption. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, you know, so having, having players like that with us allows us to kind of expand out a little bit further into different genres and things like that. And then all of us just having completely different musical backgrounds coming up of, you know, um, like for me when I was young and growing up around the house it was a lot of like 80s and 90s like Christian music and kind of like some rock stuff mixed in with like a little bit of like Brooks and Dunn and George Strait things like that growing up and then you know growing up into me in high school loving you know uh, like metal music as well as just all various types of pop music things like that and then Andrew I know that you've got yeah I like some pretty backfield. messy He's in left field, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But I'm really thankful that I'm with a group where all of us have such a broad uh, catalog when it comes to, like, just on the way here, we were listening to everything from metal to acoustic singer-songwriter stuff. And, you know, if it's good songs, it's good songs. Don't forget yeah. rap. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah everything <laughs> this guy knows uh, every word to any Eminem song. He's <laughs> popping on, and he'll say he doesn't know it, but you get a, you get a couple drinks in him, and he'll start rapping every that's single awesome. word. Yeah, that, that's kind of funny because we have really differing tastes in the music too. So, like, we obviously we both love like red dirt music, and but he's really into like older country too. And like, I, yeah. I, I like some of that too, but like, I'll, I'll expand on to like, like. Like some of the n- n- newer country, especially a lot of the red dirt scene, yeah. and I, I know I've kind of exposed that to him more once he like he came up here to Stillwater. And he, he didn't know as many red dirt brands, but now having the podcast and me sitting here showing him everybody that's good, he's <laughs> no, he's kind of yeah. he's he's, he's kind of gotten exposed that's, to it's, it. It's it's the best thing I've found, you know, going up in life is just like having friends with completely different backgrounds of what they listen to, you know, how they grew up, things like that, of just like getting to see the world through all these different people's perspectives just like you know helps give you an idea yourself when you're wanting to write or you can just put yourself in different positions as a listener to like you know if I'm used to hearing this type of punk music or this type of rock music like how would I experience that as a listener of hearing our music so we can put ourselves in the shoes of other listeners of how they feel about that do we think that you know we might bring something to the table that they like um, that you know normally they wouldn't dip their toe into you know, this type of music, maybe. So if we can do things like that, you know, that really just helps to grow and expand of what we do and continue to grow our playing as well. Exactly. There's several um, artists, especially in the red dirt genre, that I hadn't heard of until coming here, and especially working here. Yeah, yeah. Like DJing here, people are like, they shove it down your throat, what they want to hear and, yeah, and how absolutely. many times they want to hear it especially. So you get, <laughs> you get like, you know, exposed to all these different musicians. And now it's like, I was telling him the other day, I was like, just being here for, so I, I transferred to school here from, from a different school. And I was telling him in the only the, you know, eight months or whatever that I've been here, it's like, I really am starting to like this type of music. You know, it's, yeah. it's become a whole thing. So we've got him turned on to all the good music. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. It was even like for me growing up, man, like, we didn't listen to a whole lot of country music around the house, so it was like I didn't really get into it until high school, yeah. <laughs> almost. You know, I was a junior just about in high school by the time I was like, all right, I can listen to some country music now. <laughs> and, you know, now we're out here playing Texas country, and I love it, you know. And just getting to go and see, especially going and playing and getting to open up for these bands and just seeing them play their music live because, you know, it's seeing totally a live show experience. versus just listening to the album are two completely different things. You know, you never know what they're going to change or what it might sound like live, good, bad. What are they, how are they doing it? You know, yeah. so I mean, that's exciting for us to see. That. Even compared to our album, we sound <laughs> totally different on live than we did then. Yeah, I no, was just absolutely. listening to the intro when he was playing Boomtown, and I'm thinking, man, I play that so much differently now than I did when we recorded that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. here's a question for each of you. So, speaking about, like, what has kind of, like, inspired, like, how you guys make your music, for each individual, like, each one of you, is there, like, a certain musician of a band that you try to model your style play over, or you just try to create your own sound? I I don't have a particular basis that I model my stuff after. Uh, I, I play guitar and sing, too, but I don't really have any influences other than that one clip of a song I'll hear. I'm like, ah, oh, that was a really cool idea, mm-hmm. trick or an idea. Yeah. But I, I don't have one guy. What about y'all? I have a few. So uh, when I have my top three guitarists, there's Eddie Van Halen, number one, Steve Ray Vaughan, and then uh, Randy Rhodes, who played with Ozzy Osbourne in the early days before he died. Yeah. Those are my major influences that I've been playing since I was uh, probably 17, 18. We just kind of started a garage band and didn't really go anywhere and it wasn't <laughs> that was back when I was a young lad and <laughs> listening to him and his friends jam out that's when he was playing bass yeah I was back in those days he was yeah. playing bass in a little garage band and uh and so yeah this is uh Jeremiah is my uncle so uh I, I was gonna ask that yeah. I didn't know if you guys were brothers or yeah were, yeah no yeah, yeah. he's my uncle <laughs> uh, and so yeah we're just uh 10 years apart so it's basically it's almost like now it's like now that we're older, it's basically like an older brother. Yeah. With yeah. things, it's like, it's like, yeah, my dad's my dad's full brother. Yeah, that's my uncle. But like <laughs> him and his brother, they're just a couple older brothers. Well, just the sheer amount of time y'all spend with each other too. Yeah. Being on the road. Yeah. 
So if you don't have a necessarily a, a musician that influenced maybe how you play, it, was there somebody growing up that was you were kind of looked up to as a musician that you always kind of thought, you know, I like this is my favorite artist, so to speak, and you kind of modeled what you liked after that or anything like that? Uh, for me, growing up, uh, like really probably around like 2007, 2008, I discovered John Mayer and his stuff and, uh, you know, really started listening a lot from there on out from, you know, his first album, Room for Squares, all the way up through everything. And so a lot of my uh, rhythm playing and just like a lot of my ideas and feels came from just listening to a lot of John Mayer's phrasing or how he may create chords and different things like that to be able to add different things in. And then just, you know, you eventually start to take that because you're never going to sound exactly like whoever <laughs> you want to sound like. Right. So, you know, from there basically blended into my own style of playing the guitar, playing rhythm and things like that of just, you know, honing in on how I want to sound specifically and then just focusing on that rather than like continually trying to just sound completely opposite. Now there are definitely times where that makes sense and you know you're maybe looking for you know you don't know what you're looking for so you just jump off the deep end and go do whatever but uh, you know a lot of my stuff really sits back to like things that I started out on just an acoustic guitar playing you know singer songwriter style stuff and then blending that style into my own to then phase into whatever songs that we're writing. Yeah. So speaking of songwriting, so I know Sam writes songs too, but you also can contribute a lot as well. Yeah, so there were uh, Hometown on the first record, that was mine, and then uh, I contributed uh, the second verse to Tattooed Roses, mm -hmm. and as well as the bridge with that song, and so like, it, like Sam, a lot of times, you know, he'll come with like, hey, I got an idea for a song, and you know, it may be basically done from there, or he may approach and be like, man, I got a verse and like half a chorus, yeah. or I got an idea. And so yeah. it's all like, you know, we'll sit down, we would have, uh, you know, back when we were kind of in full writing mode process, you know, once a week where we would just go over to Sam's and we would all just set up, you know, or a majority of us would, and just kind of sit there and be like, do we have an idea already or not? Like, you know, for, for example, one of the songs coming up on the next album is called Close Encounters. Uh, we were over at Sam's apartment, and we were sitting there, and we were just like, we're like, we're here, we're going to write. We have no idea <laughs> what we're going to write. So everyone's like, just start throwing like topics or stories like that you've experienced or from a friend or whatever. So we're sitting there, and uh, a good friend of Sam's and mine, Graham, he was sitting there, and he was talking about his grandparents. And uh, back in, I guess, it was probably the 70s, uh, at one point, they were they thought they were abducted by aliens because uh, they <laughs> they said they went out into a field on Friday night, and the next thing they knew, it was Sunday morning and they were naked. <laughs> and so they were naked in a field, and uh, you know we assumed that was probably drugs. It probably wasn't aliens. But uh, I was going to say it sounds like they got abducted yeah, by a substance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they they definitely went on a trip, I'd say, uh, <laughs> as far as we're aware. But like the idea of that, we were like. Wouldn't it be fun to like try and write a song about aliens? <laughs> like, and so like we wrote this song basically about a guy, um, you know, he's got his own farm, he's out, you know, middle of nowhere on his ranch, and you know, weird things start happening. He's like, he's got, he's got, you know, crops that are blown down, but he's like, well, it might be these, you know, the kids they live down, you know, this family down the farm, it's probably them, you know. Come to find out, it's you know, it's aliens who have got them by the bridge. But, you know, the whole, the course the whole time is, is basically, you know, it's, you know, my daddy said there's nothing out there except Jesus when he comes back for the second time. And so it's kind of going off of, like, our relationships growing up and our upbringing of, like, if you would have brought that to your parents as a young yeah. kid being like, there's aliens out there, what might have they have said to that? And so we just kind of made this fun story around that with, you know, different riffs that I had come up with. And I was like, I want to write a song to this riff. And then we we just went from there with it. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's an awesome story right there. <laughs> yeah. um, so one thing I noticed on your last album that you did, um, 
no vacancy for anybody, is, is what I was wondering. I, I sat down this week, and I was, I was listening, listening to all the music that you, that you guys had, and I really started reading into the lyrics on every song of N- No Vacancy. And I'd read something somewhere towards, like, it'd be cool. Is like, I wonder if Missed Call and Tattooed Roses, if that's the same woman. So I, it led me to believe, okay, maybe there's something, a connected thread here. So I went through there and, and read all the lyrics and just read all of it just like like it's like a poetry or a story. Mm-hmm. And it's really quite interesting that, like, I was wondering if that was, like, intended because it seems like all the songs on there have a singular theme of, like, mm-hmm. heartbreak, getting over heartbreak through, like, alcohol, sub- substance, and yeah. going through, like, a really hard time. Yeah. So as a songwriter that contributed to the album, is this a singular storyline of a guy going through the stages of grief, just, like, accepting what's happened, breaking up, stuff like that? Or is it just a collection of songs that just happen to be on that same theme? Uh, I mean, I would say originally, you know, when we when we were putting songs together for the first album, we were, you know, it was, we were just at first just, well, this is all we have. So, you know, we got to put it on the album. This yeah. is all we got. And we started writing and keep going. And, you know, as we realized, as the songs were coming together and we're getting ready, you know, to start deciding song order for the album and things like that, we're kind of noticing that, like, once, you know, No Vacancy itself was a complete filler song. Hmm. Was yeah. We had, we had really? nine songs on the album, I believe, or eight. I think we had eight songs on the album and we Ooh. wanted nine. And then we had two skits that we did, the yeah. first and the last yeah. song. And uh, we were like, hey, man, we need, you know, we just need a song like doesn't have to be the best song ever or anything like that we just need something (laughs) and he was like well and because at that time sam was regular on the road for his job while he's dating this girl so when he talks about sitting on the curbside (laughs) liquor in a cup like that's real life wow what he's doing he's out there he says his girlfriend's gonna call him by eight that you know yeah that's what he's waiting for he doesn't want to stay up late because he's got work early as hell the next morning Mm -hmm. and so you know those all these stories come the majority from that first album are just real life experiences through, you know, you have postcard with Sam breaking up with a with an ex girlfriend in college mm-hmm. early on, figuring out okay that's not gonna work out, and then, you know, it kind of we figured out by the end of it with no vacancy, every like we treated you know the album as that hotel and every song was an occupant in oh, that hotel. Oh, okay. So someone, uh, you know, the guy that's there working. And he's there every weekend. Yeah. It's filled up. That's no vacancy. Yeah. You've got a guy, um, you know, wishing to be back in his hometown, even though he hates it because mm-hmm. he's been gone for so long. Yeah. And then you've got, uh, you know, you've got the guy that's way too drunk at 3.30 in the morning trying to call his ex-girlfriend. Yeah. You know, and she's not picking up. That's missed call. You know, Tattoo <laughs> Roses, you've got a girl who just went through, you know, a breakup with this guy who, th- who she thought was the one. Yeah. And she's in that next hotel room there. Uh-huh. We kind of like it very unintentionally became, you know, kind of a story woven album. Yeah. When that necessarily wasn't the intention in yeah. the beginning, it kind of all wove together of like, even though, you know, you could definitely, I can see it that way of, you know, a lot of these mm-hmm. songs, how they can be connected through different stages of, you know, Miss Call being right yeah. after she broke up. Exactly. And, you know, Tattooed Roses with her being on the other end of that. Postcard was when you left. You mm-hmm. know, things like that. They all definitely work together. And that's, that may have, that was never really the intention necessarily. Is like, these are all one person in one story. But they were just kind of like a trove of like, these are the last few years of my life and I've gone through you know, these relationships and these breakups and, and these, you know, substance abuse problems, trying to get through that, trying to get through work, trying to get through your relationship, you know, things like that. Wow, I, that, that, answered, <laughs> that answered, that was the biggest question I had this whole time because when I listened <laughs> to that, I, I'm not kidding in my notes, I had, I wrote a whole book where I wrote, wrote down every single song and I was like, this is what it means, what, what I think it means, just the overall themes. I'm like, okay, there's kind of a thread here. It's super like, oh, fascinating. It really is. Really, yeah. The well, other point, like, yeah. from an outside, uh, what someone took from it. Yeah. After really diving deep into it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, like, that's like the beautiful thing about music is, like, even ne- necessarily if you don't ha- if you have one idea, you know, this is what this song is about, you know, people who listen to music, they're always going to have their own reason of why this song means this to them because of any number of experiences that were going on in their life while they listen to the song or just, you know, 
going into a deep dive and looking at it where you can get those ideas. Because, like, when you were talking about it, it's like, damn, that makes a lot. So it's, like, it's like, maybe we should take that and start using that as what we, what, how we wrote it. Yeah. But, uh, no, it, I think, like, I really like that take. I don't think that that takes anything away from the album or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, I don't think really, you know, whatever people's opinion are, the album, like, it is what it is to us, you know, as the band who wrote it and recorded and everything, but it's always going to mean something different yeah. to anyone else who listens to the music. So it's awesome to hear those he's, stories. He's telling me about this earlier this week. He's like, yeah, I got all these, all these thoughts, and he's, like, trying to explain it to me. I was like, they're going to they're gonna straight up tell you, like, oh, that's too deep. That's, that's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not that deep. Yeah. Hey, so, but sometimes, sometimes it is that deep. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, there have been songs where, you know, we have Ode to Bourbon where, like, originally that song, you know, was just – about whiskey and we ended up losing someone close to us in the mm-hmm. band um, way before it was recorded or anything while we were still in the middle of writing the song we just had a first chorus and a verse yeah. and, uh, and we ended up losing somebody and that song really for us became an ode to remember in Jim yeah. uh, he owned a vacuum shop in Odessa and every Monday night we would get together and just drink beers and just jam out and play music and uh and within a couple of weeks, Sam and I showed up through knowing people there. And then what? Like within a month after that, probably within about a month after me coming by the shop for that first time, uh, a couple of people had stopped coming and we had we had five people. And Sam was like, well, you know, I write, you know, some original songs. Like, do you guys think we should do something with that? Or do you just want to be like a bar band? Or, you know, what do you want to what do you want to do? And we're like, well. First off, let's hear what you got. <laughs> you know, like we'll hold go, on. Yeah. You know, you know, everybody, you know, I trust me, plenty of songs that I've written that are not great. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, let's hear it. And, you know, I think he pulled out Boomtown. Yeah. Uh, he pulled out Boomtown and he was like, I wrote this just about working out in the oil field. Yeah. And we were like, that's very relatable. <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of us grew up, you know, <laughs> either directly working in the oil field or your parents or your mm-hmm. brother or sister, whatever. And, uh, you know, so we all have that experience of the oil field life and, you know, just living in the Permian Basin for 20 plus years. Yeah. You know, it's all it is is oil out there. Yeah, <laughs> and so, sure. uh, you know, he did that and then he had started writing Ode to Bourbon. So we just started writing and playing and figuring out, okay, what do we want it to sound like? And, you know, just kind of stepped up from there and we were we were in that vacuum shop for maybe about three months about from february to middle of april uh and then after that sad the gym passed away uh but you know if it wasn't for him <laughs> none of us would be here doing yeah. this today yeah. so it was awesome uh, you know it's just and it's just you know a fun story for us and just like where'd y'all meet up it's like in the repair section of a vacuum <laughs> shop. There was just a drum set back there with a crappy little like four input board for microphones to these little crappy speakers and everything. And we would just, we'd get up there at like seven and play till like 10.30. It was just, we would just jam out, play whatever. It was basically just a time for all of us. We're like, we're done with work. We just want to go chill, you know, and have a good time. And it's crazy that it's turned into this after just a few years. Yeah, for sure. Not to get away from the, not to get away from the music and everything, but um, I saw you guys are going to be playing at Billy Bob's soon. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk to us about it. that? That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank I'm going to let them know when, Jeremiah. Uh, March third. So next Friday, we're going to be playing at Billy Bob's. Or if you're listening to this, we might have already played at Billy Bob's. <laughs> this, should, this should come out Monday. <laughs> so. right, if it comes out Monday, yeah. if you're listening right now and it is not Friday, March 3rd, and you live in or around the Fort Worth area, we will be at Billy Bob's, Texas. We got our first time out there headlining. Oh, it's going to be a party, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be great. I, I think tomorrow's going to be a party, too. Oh, yeah, I think it'll be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, can't I, think, wait. I think playing here at the, the Tone would be a great experience. It's, I can't imagine what it's like to. I mean, it's one thing to like come in a place like this where you've. You know, you've had all these different musicians throughout the years play here, but to actually be up there playing, you know, I can't imagine what the, you know, the feeling must be like. I mean, those 90 minutes on stage is what drives you to go play the next weekend. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, like, you can go through so much stuff. Your band breaking down outside Sweetwater. And, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, you know, just like any, like, life is life. 
stuff happens. But w once you get on there and you finish your set, you, the adrenaline's pumping through you. The people are screaming. The people are having a good time. Like you've entertained people. You did your job, and that drives you. You know. Yeah, Regardless absolutely. Regardless of where it is, if it if it was a crappy bar or a nice big place like this, like I'm we played some crappy show. bars before. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We're still do you, gonna go 100%. Do you guys have a favorite place that you've played? We can kind of go down the line here if you've each got one. Uh, start the other end. Okay. <laughs> My favorite was uh, opening for Co. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was, yeah. We opened up for we opened up for Co. Wetzel uh, up in Lubbock at uh, at uh, Cook's Garage. Cook's Garage. Yeah. yeah. Cook's Garage. Right. That was that That's was great. the biggest show that we've ever played. Uh, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. We found out uh, we found out the week before. Uh, that show because they didn't have a middle performer and uh, we were actually playing a festival in Lubbock the next weekend <laughs> and uh, so we had to keep it on the hush. yeah so yeah if you don't know usually within music there are non-competes and there are distance clauses in your contracts with venues so like because we were playing in Lubbock uh, normal radius might be 60 miles, 60 days. So you can't play within 60 miles within 60 days. Hmm. And because we were playing that next weekend, we had to get that cleared through that festival. And their rules were like, as long as you tell no one and then announce that you're playing the next weekend at Jab Fest, they're like, you can play it. And okay. so it was kept completely quiet. And uh, and so that was that was really cool day of, you know, we had our drum kit set up on the stage and it's got you know our name on it and people were like DMing us on Instagram <laughs> and things like that. They're like, are y'all playing here tonight? Like, and it's like, shh. Don't tell anybody. We might be. We might be. But or someone you, st someone's you found our, our kit. You found our drum kit, dude. I've been missing that. Wouldn't you like to know? You're like, all I got to say is it's really hard to move a drum drum kit really fast. So yeah. <laughs> just stay around and find yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that one that was a that was a really cool one. Yeah, we're I mean we're all such big fans of Co anyways. We play several of his his songs on our in our live shows and just getting to you know meet his people and they were great and you know getting to play Cooks, that was a, a, a huge venue for us. So it was yeah. I think, on the bucket list. Uh, for me Chili Fest was the first like huge stage yeah, we Fest hit. Cool. That was gnarly. Like just the crowd, those kids over there, crazy oh, yeah. man. That they was had they show. had like an entire like a literal like full porcelain bathtub <laughs> out beer. out in the middle of like <laughs> the crowd of people. Like there's just a small hole, and it was this huge porcelain bathtub filled with beer, <laughs> like and ice, and it was just like there. What and the I'm cake? like, yeah, I was like, I was like, I did, dude, the frats and sororities are they like are crazy. crazy down for Chili Fest. Like they build these like. Huge, massive like massive, like fort. Yeah, forts basically is yeah. the best way to describe it. Like there are levels to it. There's like a DJ booth. Like it's insane. Like yeah. and uh, that. Yeah, Chili Fest was great. Uh, Lubbock has been really probably some of my like most favorite shows that we've done. Um, yeah, up at, up near Blue Light and uh, playing Blue Light there. Uh, also, Twisted J. Twisted J. Right now mm. might be my favorite place to play yeah. um, just because it always feels really good there but you know the crowd's always just buck wild yeah. you know so that's just that's just more fun for us you know because it's like you get wild on stage I'm like I want to see the crowd yeah you know, you go wild to it. yeah are, are there any like do you guys have like a crazy story from like one in your shows like going to a show on the road anything like really <laughs> really amazing really crazy amazing. the harder question I'm sure is trying to narrow it down to just one right? <laughs> yeah, yeah probably yeah well, I guess like yeah narrow I it down think into one but I don't I don't want to say it. yeah that's the thing like what are we allowed to say you, you guys can say whatever you want we <laughs> say we, whatever we, want. we got to decide what yeah, exactly right. now what we now want. whatever you say. Yeah, you said it. Yeah, I just, we said it. It's out there. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you, got, you guys feel comfortable to say, say, say whatever story you want to say. Uh, there was one. It was a private party we went to. I don't even remember where. but uh, The Weatherford like, one? Or the party uh, in the Pines? It was with the sand pit. With the oh, right. oh well, that was in Weatherford. We, yeah, we had to. <laughs> we, they didn't have a stage or anything. They put us in their horse 
rink, like just dirt, you know? And uh, they had a generator that was loud as hell, but they had it like way off and that was gonna power our entire, we had our own PA that we brought, our entire mm -hmm. system. And we were like, where are we gonna stand? So we went down to Home Depot and got like seven panels of like the- Plywood. Yeah, the plywood. Yeah. And just laid it all out and it's all flopping around. We're tripping over. So we could have something set. to stand on. Yeah. Oh because like God. literally like, it was, it was like she, yeah, yeah, I will like, what she was trying to do was great. She was trying to do like a homegrown. Uh, oh, great people! Like great people. They were they were doing like a charity thing for like horses mm -hmm. for like rehabilitation and things like that. And it was like supposed to be a fundraiser, uh, and it was the first year, and there was just friends and family basically. Yeah, um, which was fine, but like there was there was one point, uh, like we had we had finished like. We had finished like our set or like a one of our sets. I think we were doing two or whatever, and uh, and right before we were about to go on and start playing again, like the lady who was running it came up. She was like, "Hey, uh, this girl wants to go and show her pony off." So she like she's like gonna be a show like a show pony girl, and uh, like so she was like, "Can you just give us like 15 minutes and then you can go back on?" I'm like, "Okay, yeah, sure, fine." <laughs> so she brings out. This little, she was probably six or seven, yeah, really young. if that, maybe five, like five or six year old girl and this little Shetland pony. And she was just like parading it, parading it around, going. And, uh, <laughs> and she did that for 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, and so like 45 minutes go by and it's like starting to get dark. So we oh, start yeah. playing again and we go up and we like finish, like we finish our show because it was in dark done time yeah like we were done and uh the lady who had hired us had come up and was like hey i just barely got done with all like you know talking to people and all this i haven't even had a chance to listen to any music yet like y'all are done like why are you done i'm like because you hired us from from this time to this time and yeah. we're 30 minutes past the oh, time yeah. we already had to bring our trucks and, and yeah like, use headlights to even yeah break down it was like stuff. headlights wow. on <laughs> stuff and so like we ended up playing a few more songs uh and my iPad screen got cracked. Oh. <laughs> so I was not happy about that. <laughs> there was that, and we played another private party in Weather. We just figured out Weatherford yeah, is Weatherford not do our city for private parties. That's okay. You can stay away we had, from we had a, we, okay. We had, a, we had a song that we were joking about, like, Weatherford actually Blues. writing called the Weatherford Blues, because it was just like, <laughs> we went there, and, like, we went back, what, not even, like, a month or two yeah, later, and it was like, they were both close together, and both were just, like, shit shit. They're on the same street. Like, they were just, they were just, like, the weirdest thing, like, it was just, yeah, we were like, ah, I don't know if we're yeah. gonna do Weatherford private parties. The other one anymore. was on a, on someone's driveway, and, again, no power out no there. No power, yeah. And it was on, like, a, like a, 15 slope. degree slope so yeah. we're all like <laughs> trying not to fall down again in Weatherford yeah. playing our show and oh man those people were nuts they were just feeding the strings while oh, we were yeah. gone we, we had a blast but uh, loading up after that show it was uh, high tension yeah yeah, that one that one Sam uh, at the time <laughs> the, the guy whose private party was his birthday or whatever was like come on he's like take a shot with me take a shot come on He's like, dude, I gotta like go play a show. <laughs> he's like, I've already taken five shots with you. He's like, hey, he's like, I don't give a fuck about that. He's like, come on. He's like, come on, let's drink some more. And he's like, well, we're here for you, so okay. <laughs> Sam goes, does that by himself. And so it's like, he comes back up to stage, and I'm like, kind of looking drunk. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, he's singing all right. And then, and then at one point, he just looked at us. And then set his guitar down and just, just walked, walked off. <laughs> he just walked off. And he like he just he didn't say anything. He yeah. just walked off into the crowd and sat there with his arm crossed and just was standing there watching us. So he goes up to Nicole, uh, my my wife. Oh, she yeah. does work for us, and um, she would go on the road every show. And right now she's not with us because she's pregnant and uh, going to give birth here in a couple months. But he goes over to Nicole and he's like. Looking at her, like nodding his head, like <laughs> like while we're playing music, yeah. like we're finishing out a song, yeah. oh, and he had already walked off stage, and we're not done with it. So I'm sitting there looking at the rest of the guys, and I'm sing? like, I'm like, I guess I'm gonna sing a couple <laughs> of songs now. So it's yeah. like we like look around, and I'm like, all right, boys, Tennessee whiskey, yeah, well, let's and go. And then I proceeded to just like bomb. 
the entire thing because I was wasted too. And that was the worst <laughs> I've ever played bass in front of people in my entire life. Yeah. I'm pretty uh, sure I was still playing and, and Sam drives off with somebody, doesn't he? In what, the first Weatherford gig? I don't remember. No, I, I think know. his, well, his take buddy. Did he in a truck or something? No, <laughs> his buddy was there. His buddy passed out in the truck. But I don't know if, like, his buddy, while we were. No, I don't think so. I don't think, I don't, I don't I don't think so. It's kind of a but, blur. Yeah, that <laughs> night was a blur. a blur. I remember after that, I drove back to Fort Worth because uh, I had stayed with a friend the night before. And after that, I was like, I'm not going to the hotel. I called my friend at, like, 1.30 in the morning. I was like. I'm 30 minutes from your house. So I was like, I was like, be there. He's like, all right, cool. <laughs> He's like, what happened? I was like, it was just a shit show. I don't he really just wanna, walked off. I don't want to talk like, about it. I was like, I don't want to talk about it. You know, and it's like, we just, you know, it's after that was, I think, when we first, in, when we instituted the rule of, uh, yeah, no more getting drunk uh, on stage <laughs> anymore. It was like, we got to like, you can have, you can have some before. You can have some while you're doing it, but like. Figure it out, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, because you know you're you're being hired to go play somewhere. Yeah. You, you want to be professional, yeah, and so that. you know. Yeah, luckily, I would say with our mess ups in our career, been blessed that it was you know private events and <laughs> with yeah. people that we knew who had hired us, and so they kind of. <laughs> At that stage in our playing, knew care. what they were getting. They it were doesn't just like, matter. They're all in Weatherford anyway. Yeah, they're like, we just want to, we just want to party with y'all. I'm like, it would have been a lot cheaper to just bring us out here and party with you. Yeah. Like, we could have just partied and not yeah, played exactly. music. Like, <laughs> like, just pay for our gas. Yeah. <laughs> Give us some beer. That, like, like, that, right. that, oh, have yeah. free drinks. We'll party with yeah. you all night. We'll be there. <laughs> Do you guys listen to your own music? No. No. Not anymore. Every once in a while, I'll have one of our songs come on shuffle, and I'm like. Huh, that's how that sounded. <laughs> yeah. We just have evolved so much in our live show and doing it week after week. That like little things tweak here and there. Lance, you play a lot gamier than you did on yeah. the album. Yeah. And I, now I'm basically running a distortion on my bass too. So yeah. it's just interesting when it does come up to see the differences, but yeah. I'm never like I'm gonna go listen to No Vacancy right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah, I was like my like my thing was like people, especially like when the album first came out or we'll release a new single, people are like, oh, have you listened to it? I'm like, I just got done listening to it for yeah. like weeks. Uh, <laughs> listening to like uh, we'll do we'll get mix edits, listen back to those, and it's like each of those mix edits, you know, whether it's maybe two sometimes, it may be three or four, each of those mix edits is getting fifty to a hundred listens. On you headphones, know, in the car. Yeah, you're speakers. listening to it everywhere. You're listening yeah. to it on your phone speaker, in you know, in AirPods, in your car, in your mom's car, in your dad's car, yeah. on your TV, on your little Bluetooth speaker in your room. You're listening to it everywhere to see how you know if anything is poking out where we don't want it, and then you know going through that, and then once we get that done, we get send it off for mastering, and I get the master back, and I'll listen to the master five to ten times is just the final <laughs> listens through, and then after that, I'm like. I don't want to hear that song anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've listened to it enough. <laughs> that kind of leads into another question I had. Do you guys have a specific place? If you're gonna, if you say, "Hey, I'm gonna sit down and listen to the, this new song," uh, you know, not necessarily yours, but somebody else's. Is there a place that you go, like a go-to spot to listen? Like some people's maybe in the car or in front of like some monitors or yeah. your headphones, you know, that kind of stuff. The truck. <laughs> the truck. Yeah, the truck. The truck. Yeah. I'd say for me, it'd either be uh, in my car or on my AirPods. Yeah. You're real familiar much. with what your car sounds like because yeah. you drive it. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing, too. Yeah, it's just listening to it in different places because everybody's got, you know, pretty much something different. And then you have things that are kind of unifying. Like, if you've got a pair of AirPods, yeah. there's millions of people who listen to music on AirPods. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, right. that's a good standard. Yeah. Or, like, a lot of it was, like, uh, we used to have, like, or it's like you go and get in an older vehicle that has maybe not the best speakers in yeah. it because you may have some of that sounds great in the mixing monitors in the studio and you go to your car speakers, yeah. yeah you go to the car and all of a sudden things are blown out or it's not pulling frequency right. so it's like okay so you have to like you know work with things like that but that's just you know part of every artist you know doing I, I, I'll say this just because you brought, brought it up I, I was in a car last night that the speakers were like a little bit off, like the front ones were a little bit in front of the back ones, so it sounded oh, like an echo. I was listening to your old songs, still sounded great. Hey. So you guys did a great <laughs> job. Good to hear, good to hear, man. <laughs> I gotta bring this up just because I promised Jagger that I would. Oh, 
So we, I, I don't know, it's been several weeks ago. Yeah. He was like, I found Treaty Oak's email online. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to send him an email. So I was just curious as to who, you know, maybe handles your email because he never got a response back, oh, no. unfortunately. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, our manager mostly handles the email. What's their uh, name? <laughs> he's not here today. Uh, a few of us have that, access. A few of us, like, I have access, and I'll see some stuff come through. I've never but, been like, um, <laughs> mainly it's, like, the stuff that I have it for is for any of our accounts yeah. set up through our, you know, for all of our streaming stuff or for social media. Uh, I'm sorry that there's not a response. <laughs> it's okay. Eli. It, it worked out either way. <laughs> we'll call Eli out. Eli, this is your fault. <laughs> we got around you. Yeah. Uh, exactly. You Just know, show up. Kind of speaking of your um, uh, streaming platforms, do, does it ever, I mean, you some of your songs have just millions and millions of streams. Does, mm-hmm. does that ever, like, hit you out of nowhere? Like, sit back and, like, wow. Like, you know? like every time I think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no <laughs> Vacancy has 6 million views yeah. as of today on, on, on Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah. you, guys so have, that's, you guys have four songs over a million, um, and I know... Uh, stay tuned is kind of approaching there. Yeah, and that's just Spotify. Uh, that's yeah, so. that, that's, that's just Spotify. Spotify yeah, well. I just saw. I just got an email from uh, Apple Music that this week Miss Call hit two million streams in America on Apple Music. All right, so, that's cool. awesome. So yeah, Miss Call has grown a lot over the past uh, month. about month, a little yeah. over a month. Yeah. Uh, we had a few people on TikTok <laughs> just put that music behind yeah. whatever video, and for some reason. People like it. <laughs> you, you guys are at three million on Spotify. Oh, wow. Wow. And uh, Ode to Bourbon's on at two, and Leaving Hell's at one point three. I mean, oh, wow. I don't always think about it. Yeah. When someone brings it up, or Lance will be like, "Yo, did y'all know we hit this many million on something?" Wow, yeah. that's wild. Yeah. That's why us. Like, yeah, we're well, so lucky. Yeah, it's for it. real. It's it's like you know, even like for us, it could be very easy to get into a place of like, oh yeah, this is just normal. Like yeah, yeah. we're just. We're just gonna get millions of streams on whatever, but right. like, like that's still like very new <laughs> to all of us. It's like, you know, when we put it out, we're just like, we hope people like it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You I, know, it's you know, it, and you know that of, of course, you know, you always hope that when you put music out. But it's like, you know, sometimes it's just like, we don't know how they're gonna react to this. Like, you know, <laughs> we think it sounds good, and we've been hearing it for a while, and it's like, you know. I, I yeah. was gonna say I, I have seen you guys pop up on like the spot some Spotify playlist that mm-hmm. they put out every week like Indigo and stuff yeah. like that. I have seen you guys the so- songs on there before. I'm like, good. Oh, we get to che- like go see what playlist people put songs on, uh-huh. and some of them are kind of funny. There was one Ode to Bourbon was on. It's like songs to get drunk to. <laughs> oh, there's, uh, there's like, dude, words. all the dude. The, I'll pull up some of the some of the. Funny, yeah, we we can see what you're there. putting us on. <laughs> <laughs> it's playlist. no secret. The, the playlists are wild. Let's see. Uh, Cores and Co Cores <laughs> is one of them. And we've got seven songs on there. Uh, oh. Sad Boy Cowboy, which I think <laughs> Whiskey Riff does that uh, one. Uh, let's see if there's any. GCNHM podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere to a dirt road. Somewhere to a dirt road. Montana vibes. I don't know how. Texas. <laughs> uh, appreciate appreciate it. We got missed call on welding music. Nice. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> one called You're Not an Outlaw. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that one. Yeah. Uh, man, yeah, it's you know, you never you never know like you know what you're gonna you know see something pop up on because <laughs> it's just yeah. you know it's you know it's wild because wow. even at this point, yeah, there's 70 almost 80,000 playlists insane. that That's were awesome. across and so it's like it is not lost on us <laughs> of yeah. the, you know because those numbers are just crazy because you know even just to look at you know even having an average listenership of a hundred you know 50 or a hundred thousand like that's a huge accomplishment that I know so many bands may never you know be able to achieve that just sadly because of how you know, yeah. the music industry is, and that, yeah. you know, all, there's a million reasons why. You know, I mean, just three years ago, go, yeah. we were playing three-hour bar sets of all covers. Yeah, just yeah. around Midland, Odessa. Yeah, yeah, that was what we used to do. It was just we would go in, and we would be the eight to midnight or the ten to two a.m. and we'd play three hours of music, and we'd have mm. an hour of breaks in between wow. there, and like, 
And that's what we did. And we maybe had three or four original songs. <coughs> and just throw them in. We were just doing that, and you know, uh, it you know it was definitely a good long while of still just like going playing long bar sets. Even like uh, what we got all the way down to way south of Texas, south of Houston, uh, at uh, at a place, and we were still doing like a like a three hour bar gig down there, like doing that or going yeah. to Fort Worth going to Filthy Meat Nasties and playing, you know, a three-hour bar gig because that's just what they did there. Mm -hmm. And then we got the opportunity, you know, to come back to Filthy Meat Nasties and just play a show. And so rather than, you know, doing those bar gigs and doing that, we got to start just playing our music and then as well as just starting to open up for different bands and where it's just like, we go out there and we just play our music and, like, you know, that's what we do. And so that's, what, that that's what we found, like, our enjoyment in was, you know, playing our original stuff and doing that live rather than just, like, being background music, you know, yeah. at the yeah. bar. Yeah, but we sure. spent a long time just using our own gas, personal vehicles, uh, just hoping this would go somewhere. Yeah. We up until recently we didn't pay ourselves to do this. We just said, "This is yeah. what we love doing." Yeah, yeah there is use our between yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like literally. I think I saw the first amount of money like paid out in like maybe August or September of last year. That was the first time any of us made any Ish, money. Yeah. And so like, and even then it's not a lot of money. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, doing that, but then, you know, going from there to growing where it's, you know, we're starting to see a possible, you know, future, hopefully here soon, where, it, you know, we get to do this full time. <laughs> we get to, you know, I don't have to worry about the Monday through Friday of, you know, anything going on at work. It's, you know, I can just go out and play music and we're on the road, you know. So, so do you guys still have day jobs? Uh, yeah, I do. He does. Uh, Jeremiah's. I did working. until about two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> I'm full time now. That's awesome. <laughs> so what, what, what are, are your guys' day jobs? Uh, I do IT. IT? Yeah. I am a maintenance man at a K through 12 school at, on the campus of a university in the Permian Basin. And so I'll just like, you know, change light bulbs, punch toilets, clean up some food. <laughs> and, and then you go on the weekends and absolutely shred. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People, people are shocked. They're like, you have a day job? I'm like, I picked yeah. up a dead rabbit just the other day. Like, <laughs> I, I do the nasty crap wow. sometimes. And, yeah. Yeah. I'm mopping up puke on, on a Thursday <laughs> afternoon, yeah. and then I'm playing a sold-out show on Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. uh, and yeah. sometimes, sometimes just getting seconds. off work and having to go to practice, and, like, we still rehearse because, yeah. you know, we want to do a good job out here. I'm just like, man, I really do not feel like doing trio yeah. every spare minute of my week. Yeah. But it, well, even, like, this week it was here. nice. We took Thursday off, and so it was, like, just last night I was just chilling at home. I was like, this is the best. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, usually, like, I was just like, I'd be up at the shop, you know, until 9.30, sometimes 10 o'clock on Thursday nights. And it's just like, it's nice to step back <laughs> for a minute, you know, when you have the time. Do you guys ever get, uh, like, have you ever been recognized out and about? Uh, Not often. Very uh, yeah. rarely. Very oh, rarely. Oh, when we rented the band to go down to Elotes, whoever we... Enterprise, whoever was working the counter, recognized uh, us. Oh, did he? And we're like, we're renting a band at Trivial Revival? <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, yeah, today's the deal. Today you are, yeah, I know, right? Uh, yeah, I got recognized. It's like probably the worst time to get recognized. Uh, I was at Target buying, like, underwear. And uh, I'm, like, standing over, like, by, like, the, like, uh, I guess like the video game section or whatever. I was just like, I don't, I don't even know what I was doing. Probably just probably a game or something on the screen. I was just sitting there watching it. <laughs> By TVs and this dude comes up and he's like, Oh, hey, are you Lance with Trio? And I was like, It's like, yeah. I was like, How do you know who we are? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, this because at that point, no one. That's the only time anyone's ever wow. anyone recognized me. Hey. We've done one other when we were out of town playing a gig and we were at a different bar that we weren't playing at that night. Uh, we were going to uh, go watch uh, some friends, uh, uh, Cody West and then Austin and me, go play yeah. after we got done with our show. So we went over yeah. there, and the door guy and security, they all knew who we were. I was like, how do you – I'm like, nobody <laughs> knows who we are. I'm like, awesome. this is weird. They, you know, yeah. I'm like, I don't like being recognized. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a new thing. Matt yeah. opens for Cody West, right? Yeah, all I, the time. I, have you guys heard of Matt Williams? 
I've heard that. Is he? It's, it's Mason's brother, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So okay. he 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 played here last week, okay. last uh, Saturday, and we, we okay. we've had him on our pop. Okay. Podcast awesome. Twice. <laughs> That's what I'm going to tell him next time I talk to him. Oh, you're Mason's brother, right? I, I, <laughs> just, I just met I just met Mason. Uh, we played in Oklahoma last month, and yeah. so I'd met him, uh, and so. Uh, Sorry, if we've met no. before and I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt's, he, he put on. Just making sure I was like, I'm pretty sure I know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, Matt, Matt put on a hell of a show last Saturday. Okay, it, it was awesome. really awesome to see him. And he, he kind of has a, he infuses a lot of rock rock mm-hmm. sound with his too. And his, his I think he infuses more like kind of like alternative sound than, rather than like punk. Yeah, yeah. But, but his, his he, he, did, he did a heck of a show. And his brother does absolutely shred the guitar. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's really good. He's great. Speaking of uh, other artists, do you guys have a favorite artist that you've opened for or had the opportunity to meet along the way? Oh, when we were at the Ector, we opened up for Shane Smith, and I never heard of him before, and they put on a hell of a show. I was a fan <laughs> Shane of Smith that. and the Saints, they're, yes. they're awesome. Yeah, they're they're great. super nice. Uh, yeah. I really enjoyed opening up for Corey Kent yeah. too, like last month. They were, they were nice. They were great guys. Yeah. Their band was just perfect, man. Dude, we were like... We were all we're just side stage watching that show, and I was just like in my head, like, <laughs> we should do that. We should. <laughs> I want to do something like that because it was like watching the show. And I was like, I'm watching professionals at work right now, and it was like I feel like I'm a little like intern, and I'm not <laughs> supposed to be up here doing this, and I'm watching these guys go out there and just kill it. Yeah. I mean, like, there was a bunch of stuff that had gone wrong, like where we played in San Antonio at the rodeo. They're right next to the airport and right next to an Air Force base. Uh, I think Air Force. Right next to a, a military base. So all frequencies are it was Air Force. banned out. Mm-hmm. Well, airport and uh, mm-hmm. a military yeah, base as well. And so, like, we got there and, like, they were like, hey, man, like, in-ear wireless does not work. Like, <laughs> Good luck. It doesn't work. Like, <laughs> nothing luck. like that. And they were, no, they weren't, they were super nice because they were like, hey, if you need anything, like, we already kind of checked everything. If you have ideas, like, we'll let you know if it works or not. Mm -hmm. So they were super nice with that because, you know, by the time we had gotten there, they had taken up our time to sound check, trying to figure out what all the problems were. And so, like, they were just great. We ended up, you know, we didn't really need a sound check for that, so it worked out fine. But they were just so nice of, like, man, we'll help you unload your gear, get it put up on stage, set up. You know, they were a class act. And so, yeah, they were great. Uh, yeah, Corey Kent, Kevin Fowler is super nice, him and his whole band. We opened up uh, for them one time, and uh, we'd forgotten his uh, mic at home for his amp or at the shop. <laughs> and we were sitting there, and we're like, oh, crap. And so, like, one of these guitar players was out there. I was like, hey, man, I was like, it's totally okay. Like, if not, I was like, is there any way we could borrow that? He's like, dude, whatever you need to borrow. He's like, free reign. He's like, if you need to grab a cable or grab a mic, whatever, he's like, just let RTM know and we'll get it taken care of. I was like, That's super cool. y'all are awesome because, <laughs> like, there's a lot of, like, you know, bigger bands that we've opened up for and, you know, maybe they're not the nicest or maybe, you know. There's and you don't know everything. You meet someone one time, <laughs> too, because it's like, I don't know how long this person's been on the road for or this artist has been on the road or, you know, if they're sick whatever i don't know you know you never know but when you get to have those experiences just like sitting down and talking with these guys and it's like you know we're all just normal people you know it's yeah like, exactly it's like we all love you know what we do playing music so it's like we sit down and talk about that we talk about gear anything else like that it's yeah. it's it's a lot of fun <laughs> you you have a segue go ahead take it <laughs> okay so um i'm always curious as to what kind of gear the the bands have or the musicians have so i build electric guitars so oh, I've really? got, I, and I I play a little bit of a lot of different things. Sorry, I got it. There you go. Rex Ty. Rex Ty. Okay. Co- Rex Ty. Um, custom you're welcome. Guitars. There we go. You're, you're welcome. Clip there. that. <laughs> okay. So um, I've got like a like a banjo and like a mandolin fiddle. I got several guitars. It's just I'm just always curious as to what uh, what people have. If the, do you guys have like a plethora of instruments, or you just have like the the two or three. Tr- like old reliables. It seems like Lance picks up a new guitar in every city. <laughs> it's not every city. Nah. But it's sometimes... If you want to sometimes... pick up one in Stillwater, I know where you can get one. Yeah, don't don't <laughs> tempt curious. me. I just got yeah, paid. We were, I, we were in Mississippi uh, a couple weeks ago, and after we had played, and, uh, and we were over at Rick's, and the manager there was like, hey, there's this really cool 
uh, like uh, store in town, got a bunch of old guitars and all this random stuff. So we stopped by. I ended up finding one that I liked and happened to purchase that day, and I get shit for it every time I've done that. <laughs> I'm just like, where I'm like, I'm sorry. I was like, it was a good deal. It played good, and then I play it that night. <laughs> yeah, let's find some amazing deals. Though. Yeah, and so that like that's the main thing. Like when I go to buy gear, like it's always like, is that usually a lot less than what it goes for? All right, I'll buy it. Because it's like <laughs> it's like things a like guitar sadly that got stolen uh, recently. I picked up like a couple of years ago for like two hundred bucks, and it's like a thousand dollar guitar. And so it's like, it sucks because if I want to get that same guitar again, I gotta pop out a grand yeah. to get it. But like, I only lost two hundred dollars mm-hmm. technically yeah. over the course of it. But like, it was a guitar that I hated for two years and left in the closet and didn't touch and was just trying to trade away for anything. <laughs> I was like <laughs> anything that I wanted. It. Yeah, I got rid of it. Uh, <laughs> bad trade negotiation. I'll tell you that much. Uh, but yeah, and so it's like things like that where like Jeremiah had sent that guitar in the in our group text and he was like, hey, check this out. And I was like, I'm losing money if I don't buy this. Because like, he like, it started out at 250 and I was like, that's already half, less than half of what they're going for online. And I was like, if everything works, I was like, I'm just going to make money on it. And so did that, never made it. Well, I guess I made money on it playing live, but sure. like, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so sadly that was gone. I like... I basically, with me, I'll bring guitars out on the road that usually cost me anywhere from like two to maybe 500 on the high end, just because I have more expensive guitars at home that I care a lot more <laughs> about. I care for all of my instruments, but if something, if you know, like we were playing in uh, Lubbock at the Blue Light, and I brought a guitar specifically because I was like, they throw a lot of stuff on us at that venue, <laughs> and. Uh, and so I was like, I brought a guitar that I paid $185 for and that I've never had touched or worked on. I it think sounds all he killer. did sounds great and I love it, but like we were, I think we had two songs left in the show and we're in the middle of like the third to last song. My guitar just cuts <laughs> completely. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so I just sing the rest of the song out and I'm sitting there, I'm like, I get done, pop over, I have another guitar side stage, and I go and grab it and switch it out, because they're like, what's going on? It's like, hey, everybody. I was like, I know we're having a really good time. And I was like, don't throw beer on me, specifically. I was like, <laughs> I was like, we have another show tomorrow, and I only have one more guitar with me. <laughs> and I was like, and so, uh, like, they, we, like, we did that. We went into the next song, and I had, like, three people immediately throw it and I went and stood behind the drums for the rest of the show. <laughs> I didn't sing. I Facing just played I just played guitar behind the drums and I was like You're like, like this is y'all's song. Yeah, I was like, you know, I'm not gonna sing now because you're gonna get it all over me. Exactly. And I'm like, throw it over there. Yeah. Do, you, like, do you guys work on your own equipment or he works yeah. on all my stuff. Yeah. Or, I, or I'm, basically all of our stuff. I've uh, done guitar tech work for I guess everyone that plays a string instrument here and of course I do my own uh, I've never built anything from scratch but if you give me a body and hardware like I, I could put yeah. the guitar together and done that but when it comes to gear I 90% of the time you'll see me playing my five string Bacchus best bass I've ever played in my life I got it shipped to Odessa from Moscow didn't even negotiate with the guy I loved it when I saw it and uh I, other than that, I have a backup bass. I have four or five strings, only five strings, but they're all squires, you know? Hey, Sam. It doesn't hey, hey, Sam. Sam. Oh, hey, Sam. Hey, Sam. You want to join in on the podcast, buddy? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Here. Here, we'll go. We'll, go. we'll do Bad Brad's Whiskey of the Week. We're sitting down here at the bar here at Bad Brad's, and Vern's going to show us some good whiskey this week. Man, I've actually been looking for this bottle for a while. So Widow Jane 10 Year is one of my favorite whiskeys, and I've had – I've had their 10 and their 15, but I've heard really great things about this 13. I finally got it last week, and we've sold quite a bit of it in about a week, week and a half. Uh, we're going to try a little bit of it today. They So she takes and she hunts for bottles from different distilleries, and then they, they proof it down there in New York uh, with uh, limestone water. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, this profile on this whiskey is just really, really nice. Whatever they're doing there. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, that's probably about $125 bottle retail. Uh, secondary market, it might go to 150, so it's not crazy like some of the yeah. others. Um, I, that's one of the reasons I like the 10 years because hey, you can get an $80 bottle and it's going to be an $80 bottle. 
an eighty-five dollar bottle. You know, you're not. There's not a whole lot of people just chasing it down. It, it's kind of low key, and which I really like. It's which is hard to find, man. Uh, there's people get into hey, this one one whiskey is great, so they buy everything from that company, and sometimes that works out great, and sometimes that don't really work out great. Yeah. But uh, on this one, I've had. Oh, half a dozen different Widow Janes. They've all, bare minimum, been a good whiskey. Yeah. There's been nothing where I've been like, no, we're not going to do that. But uh, they've got an Applewood Rye that's really good, the 10-year. But this this 13, I think, for the money, if you're going to spend $125 on a bottle of whiskey, and sometimes you just are, you've got an occasion, you know, it's somebody's birthday, whatever. Yeah. You can spend you can spend it on this and not feel like you overspent and be extremely happy mm. with it. Their 15 year is really good. I just got a problem with the price point on it. And from a 13 at 125 retail, 120, 125, uh, you move to the 15 and it's 225 retail. It's like, man, wow. for, for, it's a great whiskey, don't get me wrong, but I think for the money, you stick with this or you stick with the 10 year. Yeah. Let's give it a shot, see what you think. I really enjoy that. Yeah, that's like that's a, really good. That's a ninety-three proof whiskey, yeah. and it's not. It's got that bold flavor. Mm -hmm. It's really smooth, but it's not. It's not going to burn you down. No, uh, not at all. It, it really fits my profile a lot for what I yeah. like to drink. And a buddy of mine in here last night. Uh, I was like, "Hey, man, have you?" Because we've been talking about it. We're, mm -hmm. He talks about whiskey quite a bit, and I do too. He's got a crazy nice collection. <coughs> Excuse me, but I let him have some. He's like, "Oh man, I didn't think, I didn't expect that." And yeah. I was like, "Yeah, it's it kind of a little hidden gem here." Uh, but we, you know, we haven't covered many like nice, nice bottles yeah. yet. That's a nice bottle. That, you know, if you may get it for dad for his birthday mm -hmm. or whatever, something like that. Special Celebrate something. Too. Yeah, and, and you don't have to feel like you're gonna overspend. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to go buy a, you know. One hundred twenty-five dollar bottle that you might not like. like. That's that's a nice little whiskey. Yeah, that is. I, I really. It's going to fit a lot of different profiles. It's, it's got a, a really good flavor, and like you said, it doesn't burn you down. Like it tastes yeah. really good. That's me. I, really like, I don't it. mind hot whiskeys, but mm. some of them drink harder than what they should. I had, yeah. a, I and some of them just don't. Like I had a hundred and seven proof the other day, and we'll get to reviewing that on another one. But man, it did not. It drank. It drank as smooth as this. Yeah. And it was a it was 107 proof whiskey, and it's just crazy how some of them that mash bill has a lot to do with it. I really think the limestone water that they distill with or they proof with with these whiskeys makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. It smooths it down, it cleans it out. I was going to ask you what the limestone what what purpose does the limestone water specifically have? Man, whiskey's made with water. It's that simple. Best whiskey is going to come from good water. Proofing it down with good water sure as hell ain't going to hurt it. Mm -hmm. That's why the best whiskey is made up at the top of the mountain, water's, <laughs> where the water's clean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and that's why, you know, a lot of them old moonshiners, they go to them, they find them good springs. That was the big deal. If you had a good spring back in the day, you could make a lot better whiskey than whatever somebody was pumping out of their pipe mm -hmm. in town. That's why they came, them boys come from Chicago down to south. Yeah. They, because, yeah, you could move up there and make whiskey, but it's a different water. Yeah. The best water is down south. I yeah. mean, it's some of the old mountain springs, man. You can still go today and drink out of them and be crystal clear and clean, and you just got to know where to find them. We'll but, mine off. I think I will too. Got some cool stuff coming up. Yeah. Uh, got some prototypes for my smoke boxes. We'll be smoking our old fashions mm -hmm. in from now on. I saw that. I don't know yeah. if you can see it back uh, there. It's, I like it. It looks really good. We're gonna we're gonna tweak it a little bit. You can see it in the background. I should have brought it up here, but yeah. we're gonna we still got some tweaking to do. That's prototype number two or three, number three, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna we brought that one in last night. Smoked a few drinks in it. And it's a little too big, too tall. Mm -hmm. We're gonna shorten it up a little bit. Make make it where it's got a little better eye appeal. Add a handle on the top of it. Uh, but it's it's going to work out really good. It's got a, a little bit of story of Bad Brad's on there. But, uh, 
think next week what we might do, or we might do a flight of whiskey next week. Mm -hmm. I hadn't done any flights. We got these flight boards. Yeah. Um, I've got some. I think I can put together a pretty interesting flight. I know yeah. I can put a get, together a few interesting flights. Yeah, that'd be nice. But we're selling a lot of flights of whiskey right now. I'll selling some of my boards too. I'll say I'll save it for ne next week. I was going to ask you why it's called a flight, but we'll we'll, we'll, we'll talk we'll talk about it next sounds week. Sounds good. So sounds good. Uh, so you had Avery standing on last night. Yeah. Who you got next Friday? Dylan Moss. Dylan Moss. Dylan Moss. It's going to be a big crowd. Our uh, western will be open, so we'll nice. have some cornhole boards set up in the western. Nice. You want to hang out in there? On Friday night, next Friday, uh, we've got it just about where I want it to where we're going to have it mm -hmm. open full time now. Where you need to go, you know, you can go play cornhole or you can, you know, we'll set up a few extra tables and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, of course, Monday night we'll do cornhole in there, but Friday night it'll be open just to anybody mm -hmm. to go in and hang out. We're going to start doing that more. Eventually, we're going to get a stage built in there, you know, slowly but surely, yeah. man. Sweet. What, what's your special this week? Man, uh, well, we've got our daily specials, uh, just the same as always. We mm -hmm. got like Monday will be tri-tip beans and cornbread. Tuesday's nachos. Wednesday's the hoss, big old pulled pork sandwich with coleslaw on it. Dirty Thursday as always, and then we'll do uh, fried fish or smoked fish tacos on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And then today's the filibuster, big sandwich with pulled pork, ham, hot links, onion rings. Don't get me started. I'm already here. I might have to go grab yeah. one of those. <laughs> oh, no, we can make one. And burritos, man. That's the first thing. Noah walked in at 7 o'clock this morning, phone ring. Hey, I need 10 burritos. <laughs> like, man, those burrito, breakfast burritos are taking off. It's crazy. I just dropped off 40 at the Country Sea yesterday. Uh, we're, we're kicking and rolling. And yeah. I like it. I'll have to gra grab uh, a burrito before I leave today. Come on, man. <laughs> Noah will get it made. He's a yeah. good, good hand. For sure. Damn good hand. So we got Widow Jane, Lucky Widow Jane, 13. Yeah, the Lucky 13, it's a 93 proof. Um, I highly recommend it if you want to buy a nice mm. bottle. Uh, this is not one we let our friends mix with Coke. Um, if they want to do that, we give them different whiskey. We just don't open this around them. <laughs> Nothing against them, we just don't do that. Uh, it's going to be, uh, they make it in where, they make it in two or three different places. Uh, it's bottled in Kentucky, Tennessee, Indiana, but it's all, proof down it's distilled in kentucky tennessee and indiana it's all proof down and bottled in new york mm -hmm. uh, and, and the limestone water is going to be their that's their niche that's what they they really like to do and it's pure limestone water from the legendary rosendale mines in new york that don't mean nothing to me except for hey that's limestone water <laughs> and it does taste better yeah for and sure. it, it really it really blends well with that whiskey when you're proofing a whiskey down yeah what you use to proof it down matters. Yeah. So, what's a pour like this cost here at Bad Brad? Man, it's it's probably about a hundred bucks or twenty bucks a pour. Twenty bucks so, a pour. Uh, if those hundred dollar, hundred twenty dollar bottles, it's all going to be right there at twenty four. Yeah, for sure. That's going to be the owner's reserve. It's real good whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, it's but you can come in and get a flight. I think I think I saw the flight of it, the Widow Jane fifteen, and the Widow Jane. 10 i think it was 30 dollars for a mm -hmm. flight and you try them on yeah for sure you know that's that's the real ticket there some yeah. of these flights when you're coming out and since i've got 170 different bottles or seven plus that now yeah you know you can come out and you can try these flights and see what you like and then go buy a bottle you know mm -hmm. I, I don't ever recommend somebody go buy a three four hundred dollar bottle of whiskey unless they've tried it first exactly yeah for sure <laughs> i've seen it yeah. happen a lot unless you're <laughs> buying it for investment yeah like, it's a damn good investment if you're buying all right whiskey. Yeah. It's got a that. better return than just about anything. Yeah. It's pretty hard to beat. Yeah. There's a guy in Oklahoma City who's got a $10 million collection in 6,500 6, bottles. Mm -hmm. He's got it in two bunkers. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, a, he's not a doomsday prepper. He's a whiskey prepper. He, he well, wants, he, if, he's an if, investor, if stuff, man. If stuff goes south, he's going to drink drink all that whiskey. You're talking in 2020, that collection was worth seven and a half million. <sighs> wow. And, uh, you know, a month ago, it's worth 10. Tad gum. So you're talking an investor. Yeah. You're talk that's not a collect. That's not a guy, you know, putting back a couple bottles for him to drink. Not yeah. Going and buying a case of one on one. Like, hey, man, I've got enough whiskey. No, yeah. that's a guy that's, he's got 70, you know, 70 year old bottles of scotch, stuff bottled in 1939. Wow. And, and God, you just, 
it's awesome those bottles still exist and some people gripe about people collecting them but if he didn't where would they be exactly you know yeah. uh, and in an interview he did, he said that, you know, out of these 6,500 bottles that I have, there's only three of them that I've never tried the whiskey before. Hmm. Now, they may be unopened bottles that he owned, but he's opened another bottle and tried it, you know, bought yeah. two, tried it at a restaurant, yeah. tried it with a friend, whatever. That's pretty cool. Out of $6,500, or 6,500 bottles, there's only three of them he hasn't tried. Yeah. Yeah. We drink whiskey. Exactly. That's what I like to see. Yeah. There's guys that are, you know, oh, I, yeah, I've had this bottle of, Weller single barrel for five years. I, I never tried any. Wow. Yeah. Open it, it and drink it. It's it's there to drink. Yeah. Yeah, that's the point. But uh, and, and yeah, if you're doing it as investment, I, I completely understand that. But if you if you've got a bottle on your shelf that you've never tried, unless you're just wor- waiting for a set, you know, special occasion, you ought to drink it, mm-hmm. or you ought to go somewhere where you can drink it and say, yeah, that's a good bottle to buy. Exactly. Well, I can tell you what a good, good ball to buy here at Bad Brad's is. It's Widow Jane Lucky 13. Come out and try it this week at, at Bad Brad's. Come, come out Friday, see T, uh, T. Dillon Moss come and play. we got Cornhole be, Monday and good food all week. That's right. It'll be a heck of a week here. We've got all kinds of caterings going on. I've got one today, two tomorrow, a few next week. It'll be good stuff. For sure. We'll see you guys. Yeah, see you. That was Bad Brad's Whiskey of the Week. Quick question. So I noticed on check in your fir- first skit, mm-hmm. one of the one of mine's in is like, what the kind of hell name is Treaty Oak Revival? <laughs> oh, <laughs> What's the yeah. story behind the name? Uh, no one gets it right. The, yeah, well, the, well, the story the story behind the name is uh, like the origin of it. It's whatever you want it to yeah, be. Yeah, it, it can be whatever <laughs> you want it to be. The real story is not cool at all, <laughs> and uh, was rooted in search engine optimization. <laughs> yeah, because well, we had for what like a month. Tried. Yeah, we came we, up with we hundreds were, of we names. Had all these names going through, it, and it was like we never really landed on one. Or if we landed on one that sounded cool, you'd search it, and there's like a billion Google pages, and you're never gonna be found in anything and uh finally our original drummer at the time uh kelly was like uh we were talking about austin or whatever and he's like what about like the treaty oak tree down there and he's like we're like yeah what about it he's like what about like using something like that with a band name we're like okay well like we're not just gonna be treaty oak like was it you know there's gotta be something else there yeah. and so he pulled out the revival thing and i immediately searched up google and i searched treaty oak revival and it had three pages <laughs> total perfect. you searched it and i was like perfect. i was like guys this unheard is the, of this is the <laughs> this is the best sounding band name we found and it is also the best for search engine optimization yeah. so right. i was like i mean it's perfect i yeah. mean it looks great on the sign back here i oh, mean yeah. i mean and it has a great short name. you just say trio okay everybody, yeah, everybody exactly, knows what yeah. you're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah no we've had know? i don't know if Trinity it's still Bible. happening but for a while <laughs> uh, anytime anyone tries to tag the trio distillery we get tagged a lot instead of the <laughs> distillery. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's also like one of the least memorable names, apparently, because we've been called Trinity River Trinity Rival Band. Band. Yeah, Trinity There's Rival like, Band. We thought about oh, coming up with a shirt where it just has all the names that we've been called besides <laughs> our own name. So, but That's yeah. yeah, we wanted something Texas and like a three-part or a three-syllable type name. And that's what we came up with, long story short. I didn't want it to be the, we're, we're, we're a full band as a collective, so I didn't want it to be like Sam Canty and the blah, blah, blahs or whatever, you know. Yeah, so we were like, so, something that we can all be one thing. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sam Canty and the Treaty Oak Patch. There's only one left. <laughs> yeah. So uh, do you guys have a favorite song to play live? Hmm. Like a cover song or one of our own? It, anything. One of my f- I'm pretty fond of Stay Tuned. Cause yeah, I, I love yeah. Stay Tuned. I like Stay Tuned a lot. Um, Mine's Leaving Hell, by the way. Yeah, because he goes... Oh, he goes, goes hand. Jeremiah's is Leaving Hell. I go EVH all over <laughs> yeah. that song. I, he just tears it up. He recorded it on his EVH guitar. He's like whammy bar and everything. He's like... Wah. 
It's like all those crazy things. It's like he somehow still figures out how to play it live on one that doesn't have the Floyd Rose on it. I don't know how he does it. He's a magician. Uh, man, I really like uh, I really like playing Haunted House. That's one of my favorites to play live. Yeah, and mine, uh, my favorite song on the album is Tattooed Roses, so that's my favorite. That's at least the one I'm most proud of, I guess. That's awesome. I, I, I'm, I'm glad everybody was really like stay tuned because that, that's the one that really caught, caught my eye or I guess my ear so that when I first listened to it. Just the intro riff is just perfect. Yeah. It's it's such that's a unique <laughs> it's, a, it's such a unique riff to intro a song with. It really I, I loved it. it yeah. was awesome. That was one thing that I was proud of with it. And it it's very recognizable yes. as soon as you play it. Which it was like like funny enough like months later I was deep in YouTube and like there was a video popped up and it was just talking about like uh, like what's the best song to like open up a show with and things like that and he was going through all these things of like you know within the first few notes or the first note you know exactly what song it is and it's like things that make songs recognizable I was like hey we do some of that on accident <laughs> with, yeah. with these records and you know which thankfully I'm like that's something that works and so like it's always like things like that especially like with how we write riffs, we or like or how I do for our music is like very like it's structured within our chords, but I pick out between like for uh, like missed call or mm -hmm. no vacancy uh, or even like uh, uh, can't even remember the name of one of our own songs. Uh, no, <laughs> um, <laughs> Irish goodbye. Like, did, like different intro things where it's like we'll pick out, I'll, I'll pick out parts of chords or if he has like, hey, like for no vacancy, for instance, like he was like, he had already just written the chords that the song were. And so I was like, I like that, but it doesn't sound good just playing it, you know, straight through. So made a picking riff to follow around that. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of times I will do when presented with like, hey, I'm already thinking of these chords. Like they can change, but like I'm thinking of these chords to start out with. Mm -hmm. And so... We'll just, you know, roll from there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Lance and Jeremiah really dig gold out of, like, anything they're presented with. They're phenomenal guitar players. So what's your favorite part about being able to be on the road for things like this on the weekends, play places like this? What's your favorite part? And then on the complete opposite, what's the worst part? Least favorite part? Uh, my favorite part is the show <laughs> is is, all is doing i think i think we would all of that say probably <laughs> is playing the music uh i think you know. the least favorite is getting home after an eight-hour car trip on a sunday and having to go right back to work yeah yeah that, that's, that's the least fun going part back to reality is always yeah. the hardest part yeah. but one of my favorite parts is you know we we've always you know heard about like places like the Tumbleweed or Kane's Ballroom or Green Hall and a lot of these historic venues and some of these places, you know, we've gotten to see huge bands like some of our favorite people play there and then to go and actually play these types of places for me is awesome because you just, when you walk in there and you know the types of people who have played here in the past and the history behind it, that always kind of has a special place with me. So yeah. that's, that's one of my favorite and just... Getting to see new places too. Yeah. Like last week, we went to, we went on a Mississippi Alabama run, and I have never been to either of those states. And we passed Same through here. some states I've never even been to. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's another yeah really cool part is just the, the travel, getting to see different parts of the country that you know we maybe only flown over, and you know getting all to go out stations. and meet you know getting to meet all these people. It's crazy to me still. It's just like. We get to go and play, and there's hundreds of people there who listen to these songs and do it. Because it's like you can look at numbers on a on a you know on your phone or whatever of you know six million plays or however many monthly listeners, but none of it's real. Like you can't yeah, you exactly. can't imagine three hundred thousand people in a state. Like I can't imagine that. Mm -hmm. Like that. So it's like when you come out and you see a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred people, you, you go whoa, like, oh, this is real. Like, people actually do listen to this music. And they all act like you've, they've been your best friends for, like, two years. Yeah. <laughs> you know? like, they're, they're just, like, like hey, they're man, just, like, up? Like, hats like, no and glasses. Yeah. yeah. It's like we had, we played Twisted J last weekend, 
uh, over in Stephenville, and like it was like the cowboy hat night. Like at one point, I think almost every one of us had a cowboy hat from the crowd <laughs> on stage. <laughs> like at one point, Jeremiah had his regular hat on backwards and like two or three cowboy hats stacked on top wow. of his. And it was just like they just like it's like one like a Did dude while Sam hat? was singing like he wanted Sam to wear his like sunglasses or whatever, and just like. Just threw him up onto the stage. Uh, I had one guy in Dallas sneak up on the stage and uh, put a gold chain around my neck. <laughs> that, was, that was wild. I still have it too. It's right here. It's <laughs> real gold. Yeah. So. He yeah. said, "That's yeah. what he said." That's what he said. I, we yeah. haven't tested it. Yeah, you need to test it. Um, so, playing off of that, you guys got—I guess it was actually Tuesday. Well, I guess it was now it's Tuesday. But you guys are going to be playing. Historic calf ride here at Tumbleweed yes, sir. in April. Yes, sir. How does it feel to be a part of that that lineup and be at that that festival that's been going on? I don't know how many years. Long time. A long time. 30, 30 31st first year, I believe. Thir- oh wow! Thir- wow. Thirty first year. That's and awesome. All all the musicians that have been here. Yeah. How does it feel to be be a part of the lineup at calf ride? It, I I think it's awesome, especially. So I recently moved to Oklahoma, and like. My fiance's family doesn't, I I don't really think they know too much about the red dirt scene, Mm -hmm. but they, and she, she knows some red dirt artists, but when, and so I'll, I'll say the places we're playing in Texas and she knows nothing. And then, but when I said calf fry, she was like, what? And I was like, (laughs) yeah, is that good? And she's like, oh yeah, that's awesome. So I was like, okay, well, this is a pretty big festival and just seeing the lineup and stuff, I, and Obviously, for how long y'all say it's been going on, I can tell it's a pretty big deal. Yeah. So, yeah. us being Texas boys, not not knowing too much about the scene over here, you know, it, we we know it's a big deal for y'all. Yeah. So, so seeing seeing everybody else's reaction makes us know that it's a pretty special thing. Yeah. So we're we're trying to we're trying to treat it as such. Well, welcome to Oklahoma. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll, we'll be here. We'll be hanging out. Um, I think somewhere backstage around calf fry so yeah. okay, hopefully we'll sweet. get to yeah. get to meet up again yeah, and uh, see all again. absolutely yeah. exactly and we, we're already lining up a second tr- treaty of revival episode just perfect. so you know perfect <laughs> <laughs> um you said don't send it to the email just talk to Andrew. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> forget the email yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah. we've already established the email is going to get us nowhere so <laughs> <laughs> we got yeah. a lot of stuff coming in through there <laughs> yeah so uh, as we start to kind of wrap things up here, what are some, some upcoming events for you guys, and um, where can people find out more about Treaty Oak Revival? You want to talk about upcoming events? Um, we're playing several festivals coming up. I know uh, we have, obviously, I think it's, was it March 5th? 3rd. March 3rd, we're playing Billy Bob's Texas headlining, so it'll be our first time playing Billy Bob's and our first headline show at Billy Bob's, and then immediately after that, we'll be uh, we'll be headlining at Cheatham Street uh, with the Wyatt Weaver Band, and then I believe sometime after that, we'll be playing uh, Rio Frio Fest in Concan, Texas, yep. and... I can't think of any others. Troubadour? Usually, I have yeah. Troubadour Fest just got announced. Uh, I like saw that. later this yeah. year in College Station. Yeah, I saw uh, that. We ju- that just got announced. So uh, that is in May. Yeah, May we also uh, will be playing on the main stage at Larry Joe Taylor Fest, mm-hmm. I believe, April twenty sixth. Yeah, that first that first day is Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Wednesday, yeah. It's three days before this guy gets married. Correct. So. Nice. <laughs> We were like, we were like, oh, we really hope they don't ask for Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> like, Sorry, Kelsey, uh, we yeah. got a show to play. You're gonna have to move the wedding. Yeah, priorities. You yeah. Know? yeah. No, exactly. uh, that I mean, the best way is you know we announce stuff regularly on social media, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, things like that. Uh, bands in town. If you've not heard of it, bandsintown.com. If you go there, uh, you can subscribe to us there, and you'll get email updates uh, whenever we announce new shows. Sweet. And uh, then you can always just go and search Treaty Oak Revival on Bands in Town. That'll have all of our upcoming dates and shows that have been announced. Not uh, the distillery, so the band. Yeah, not the distillery. <laughs> right. the band. Hey, we're trying to work out something with the distillery. Yeah, but, that, 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 that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Treaty Oak, hit us up. We want our whiskey. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I heard you mention earlier you guys are working on a new album. Do you have any time when this might be released? Do you have any dates? 
Uh, originally, we were looking uh, towards April, which, if things go perfectly, <laughs> we would still be on track for that. It might be a little bit later now. Um, we've got a good we, chunk of it done. Yeah, we've it's got we've got over three quarters of it done, mm -hmm. but we lost our drummer recently, and so we're going in and redoing all of that all for the of, album. Yeah. yeah. And so that's just, you know, adding on time as well as like in between we have to figure out whenever we have time yeah, exactly. to go and record and anything like that just because, yeah, we, it's like we can't just choose to do it on the weekend. It's the only time we can really go play. Yeah. And so, you know, we have to figure out times during the week uh, where, you know, I can go to his house or I can record at my house mm -hmm. or, you know, wherever we need to get it done, we can get it taken care of. And so, uh, you know, we're just finishing up. Uh, I think we've got two or three more songs that we're just finishing up that'll be ready to record, and then after that, we'll get it finished being recorded and, you know, sent off for all that, and then, you know, we want it out as soon as possible, obviously. People have been asking for a second album. It's been a, a long time. For a little while. It's been a couple of years now, and, you know. I'm ready for it. Yeah, I'm ready for it, too. <laughs> We're there, ready for there's it. A lot, of the, a lot of the songs that I'm really excited for, yeah. for everybody to hear. Uh, Especially the, the Alien song as well. Yeah, I told them about those encounters, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, there's, there's a few bangers, dude. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's exciting. Hopefully, you know, late April, if everything goes perfect, if not, could be... I'd like to say June by the latest. Right. For sure. Knock on wood. Hard date. Hard, <laughs> right now. Yeah, hard date right now. <laughs> beep. Yep. That's, the, that's the date it's coming out. Yeah, so if you guys hear that, it is again. Beep, 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 beep. We're going to title the episode Treaty of Revival, new album, April 26th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give us a deadline to work towards. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. That'll, yeah. that'll like, flip the... What do you, how'd y'all get the album done? Well, we were on this podcast, and they just announced when mm -hmm. our album was coming out, and we couldn't really do anything we had, That's it. what we had to do. Yeah. So. Perfect. They did it for the people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. uh, one final thing we do on the podcast is we will have the guest kind of list some songs that they've been liking recently um, and we usually have if we have one person we'll do five but if you each want to pick one song that you've been really into recently we add it to a playlist and then we attach the playlist to the episode so uh, I can I can start yeah. down here I yeah, guess go, if, go we, ahead, go, go. if we want to so I gotta add. I gotta add a Dwight Yoakam song for today. Oh, big surprise! I know. I know. Yeah. I'm gonna add "Watch Out" by Dwight Yoakam. I'm a huge Dwight Yoakam fan as well. He, yeah, he's the biggest Dwight. He literally has a life-size cutout of Dwight Yoakam in his living room. I'm not even joking. Hell yeah! He, and how he got it is he he built a guitar for his guitar player. Oh no way! And, and he worked it out in the deal. That he had to get a life size, size cut out for Dwight Yoakam. Like, that didn't I don't, happen. It, actually, if you look back at the contract, there's nothing he stated. Like he was just, he felt like doing that. I don't think it makes sense for it. It, it's, he, he actually cuddles with it at night too. <laughs> so let's go here. All right, uh, what you got for a second? I'm also gonna add. I'll add stay tuned. Uh, I'll add stay tuned in. Boom. Boomtown Woo. onto uh, onto uh, hey, our yo. playlist this week. Okay. So everybody knows what we're. Uh, what we played here. Um, let's go back here and look here. I'm gonna go Corey Kent, and I'm gonna go. Um, I think I'm gonna go. Ain't my day by Corey Kent with Corey uh, Colby Cooper. Hey, that's a good one. Well, I'm in between a couple right now. Uh, I gotta say, what I've been having on repeat lately brings me to tears. One of my favorite bands is My Darling Dopamine by Days and Days. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that whole album is immaculate. What was the artist again? Days, like days of the week. Yep. And then days, like days and confused. Yeah. Days. You'll find it. Perfect. Oh, show me the blueprints. Great album. <laughs> um, let me see here. I've got a few, but one that would probably be new. Uh, for a lot of your listeners, at least the kind of outside Perfect. of what we do. Uh, it's called Clarkson by Sly Withers. They're a band out of Perth, Australia. Uh, oh, wow. one, of my, one of the friends, uh, a good friend of mine from college uh, is from Perth. And uh, like just recently, 
him and his band started up playing and I was talking to him about music and I was like, can you just send me music from like your scene, like from Perth, like bands mm -hmm. from your area so I can just hear what they sound like? And so he did, he put this like 14 or 15 song playlist together of just local Perth bands and you know, whether they're big or small or anything like that. And uh, I like this one a lot. It's uh, kind of like, like some punk with some rock. Um, and then you've got an Australian dude singing vocals over it. So Perfect. it sounds a little different. Uh, I'll plug one. I've been listening to uh, a song called Banger by The Drop Tines out of New Braunfels. You're giving me stuff to listen to. <laughs> and uh, another one I'll plug is uh, She Likes Girls by Dexter and the Moon Rocks. Oh, hell yeah, Dexter. Their TikToks are pretty funny if you've never yeah. gone and watched Great any bands. of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's we'll you. have to check it out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Shit. Uh, let's do uh, Plane Crash by the band Laredo. I'm not sure where they're out of. I just know they're Texas boys. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty good. I like their stuff. Jeremiah, you got any? So I was, I, I was looking through my Apple list, and my wife used up all my favorites, and I can't remember what it was. But I, if I put on an album and I remember it, I just play it for days and days. <laughs> and it, it's a rap song, so. Okay. Well, it's uh, is, yeah. Evolution by Joyner Lucas. Oh, yeah. Joyner. <laughs> so are you guys, are you guys Apple Shred. Music or Spotify users? Spotify for I'm me. Apple. 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 Oh, okay. I tried, okay. I tried Apple, they like, when it first beer? came out. Apple and, uh, <laughs> Apple does <laughs> Apple does pay better than Spotify. Uh, uh, but Okay, new title. Treaty Oak has beef with Spotify. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got beef with Spotify. Pay us for money, man. There goes the money. Thanks, Taylor. It's like, it's like you go through those, man. It's like like Apple sometimes will pay nearly double what wow. Spotify does. Wow. Like, I'm never going to hear the end of it now because yeah. I, I, I'm a Spotify guy. I'm an Apple guy. Music guy, and he's, yeah, yeah. he's a Spotify guy. Well, it's just so. like, hey, I've been, I've been Spotify, like, near since when it came out, like 2010, 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, it's when I found it. It's what got me to stop stealing music offline. <laughs> well, with Spotify, I was like, I can pay somebody like five bucks a month and I can listen to anything. I don't I have like, to pirate this music. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I don't have to possibly download all these viruses to my computer. <laughs> that are just like right. rip crappy versions off of YouTube. Yeah. But, yeah. No. And, and, then, and then YouTube went to where it like, it'll like, Exit out if you like exit out of the video and oh, stuff like yeah. that, and then like you couldn't play it. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, oh, it's that was tough. Yeah, don't get me started on that. I'm a sucker for that. I pay, I pay for YouTube premium. I do as well. I, <laughs> I hate was the like, ads. I, I can't. But dude, ads. I don't pay for anything that has ads, and so like, I don't want it. Like, it's just like it's so weird to me to like hear a commercial or see a commercial or whatever. I'm just like, it's like everything I watch or listen to doesn't have anyone else. Yeah. Breaking it up in the quit bedroom. trying to sell me things, guys. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I already have enough things that I want to purchase that I don't need to, right. <laughs> and not enough money for it all. So well, you got to figure it out. Well, well, maybe we can run an ad real quick for uh, Rex Tie Guitars. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make, make him buy. buy See now, now I'm gonna. Too. Yeah, now you're gonna give me buying. <laughs> Rex Tie Guitars. You need a guitar that will tie it all together. Hey. Clip it. Oh, my Clip gosh. It. There we perfect. go. He's got to come perfect. in a little closer and get a better, yeah, get a better radio. <laughs> Rex Tie Guitars. When you need a guitar, that'll tie it all together. There we go. Clip That's that. it. That's yours. That's, right. it. That's free, That's baby. It. Um, do you guys, um, what's your website? You sell merch on your website, all that stuff? Yeah, so it's treatyoakrevival.com. Okay. Uh, we're in the middle of it getting rebuilt. Uh, we just switched over. Uh, to a brand new merch company, and uh, they're also handling our website. So right now, it's kind of like half our old website and half our new website as right. it's being finished. But within the next week, it'll be done. Merch and everything will be available yep. through there. It all drop ships out directly to you. Uh, got a lot of new designs coming up. Whenever we, whenever the new website is fully finished and the new merch is ready for sale, uh, there'll be a big post about it, all of our socials. And so you get to see probably like five or six new designs that nobody's seen yet or maybe just a few people on the road have so far um we've got a few of them with us tonight and we've got another three or four perfect I, be, i'm gonna have to get give me one of those designs <laughs> i like them there's a new one there's a there's a couple new ones that like are my favorite yet so awesome Sweet. well 
we really appreciate you guys coming on. Yeah, we, we truly really do. Absolutely. It's uh, yeah. When I found out you guys were willing to sit down, I was like, yes, yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So uh, check these guys out and uh, try do. to get out to a show and uh, buy some merch. Download their songs. Absolutely. On Apple Music, Apple though. Music. No, on yeah. Apple Music. Yeah, I mean, listen, listen on whatever you got. I mean, we'll take it. <laughs> all right, well, thank you guys again for coming on. We thank do really guys. appreciate it. Right, yes, thank you all Thanks very for much. having us. Yep. Thank you. All right, which one is it? It's the, it's the right, it's the top right one. Okay. Cue okay. us out. Go all ahead, right, Let's Jack. do it. Hey, what's up, Cody?